Hello, clients. We wanted to reach out to you today and talk to you a little bit about something that we're getting a lot of questions on, the coronavirus, how it's impacting the market. And of course, you all know Josh, my chief investment officer, who's joining me today. So Josh, tell us, what kind of questions are you getting from clients? Well, a lot of clients are curious as to whether they need to take some kind of action as a result of this virus. Do they need to adjust their long-term strategy uh, for their accounts that are earmarked for retirement? And our answer is simply no to that. For long-term retirement accounts, we want to treat those differently than, say, short-term accounts. And the reason why our advice is to stay the course is because markets generally recover within a three or four year period of time. And the risk of getting in and out of the markets is actually greater than the risk of simply riding down the markets and then riding them back up during the recovery. And what we see over time with markets is that bad stuff happens. On the screen, you can see this is basically the world stock index. Um, Morgan Stanley puts together all stocks globally, and that's what we're looking at from 1970 to end of 2018. And you're seeing all sorts of horrible things on the screen, uh, whether it's an oil embargo or drops in stock markets or the Y2K scare, whatever the case might be. And what we see is consistently over time that markets reward investors. When you're owning that ownership in companies, that it rewards you over time. Sure, it's gonna have its bad days, it's gonna go down, but that risk that you're taking is what's rewarding you over time. Well, absolutely. And I'm getting a lot of questions from doctors saying, should I stop my dollar cost averaging strategy? And my first thought there is, I've done a really lousy job as a trainer and an educator if clients are reaching out to me. So let's just review a little bit about dollar cost averaging strategies and why this is the last point in time that you want to stop them. So Josh, let's if you can pull that last um, graph that you have up, just a refresher to all of our clients who are doing dollar cost averaging. When we do that, it's usually on a monthly basis. You usually go in with X dollars per month, a thousand, five thousand, it doesn't matter. Every month we go in with exactly the same amount. And what's happening is we're taking out the uh, risk of trying to time the exact top of the market and the exact bottom of the market. We really take the emotions out. And you can see in this particular graph, which goes back to 1970, as Josh pointed out, the markets are up or down. Let's pretend for a minute though that this was just a, mar uh, a graph of a year. When we go in every month with the same amount every month, when the market's up, like here, we look at the Y2K scare in 2000, you can see that our $1,000 or $5,000 a month is going to buy fewer shares. But if we look back to like 1990, when the market is down, that same dollar amount is actually going to be buying more shares. So this does a couple things for us over time. It reduces the average cost of the shares, it takes the stress out. And as I tell my clients over and over, I get perversely happy on days like this. And the reason is the market's down. Your 5,000 a month monthly contributions are actually going to be buying more shares. You win in two ways. When the market's up, you've got more shares, but also the price of all of your shares is going to be up. So we've got dollar cost averaging with clients. Uh, on a regular basis, but we also have a few clients who have larger sums, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars or more, and they were concerned about putting all of it in at once because they were worried that they might be getting the exact high of the market. So for some of those clients, we recommended dividing that hundred thousand dollars into five months or maybe even twelve months, and instead of putting it all in at once, we put it in over a longer period of time. Once again, our strategy there is we're trying to take advantage of dollar cost averaging. So Josh, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? Other than we feel like these markets are gonna be especially choppy over the next two months as investors are figuring out what does this virus mean to them? Um, and because it'll be especially choppy um, is our best guess over these next two months that some of your dollar cost averaging, you might accelerate into that time period. Um, so if, to Catherine's point, if you had $100,000 of new cash and you wanted to go into the market, you might even do something as uh, with a frequency of weekly 
purchases. Um, so you might do it over eight weeks and we just divide that 100,000 by those eight weeks and go slowly into the market. Um, that way, if, if we continue to see drops, not all of your purchases are made at that higher point. A really good point. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about the market in general. Personally, I think this is going to be hopefully a very short turn, uh, turn of events for the market. And the reason is our economy is incredibly sound now. We have record unemployment. There's only about 3.5% of the total population is unemployed at this time. And by economists, they consider that the number of people that are just changing jobs. And in general, most salaries are also up. So our economy is fundamentally sound. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't have choppy markets due to the virus and other things over the next few weeks or even a few months. Yeah, and, and we firmly believe that there is some economic loss to this virus. Um, you know, people don't travel as much or whatever the case might be. But I want to point out that people still spend money. They might just spend it in different ways. So, for example, if, if they're staying at home, well, it might not stop them from spending money. They just might spend it differently. They might uh, get on their phone and have a delivery service bring food to their home. Um, things simply are redirected into other spending. Healthcare will go up. Um, so we expect economic loss from all this, but we think that it's probably over-exaggerated, essentially, and that's largely because of fear. Exactly. But let's talk about another strategy that we use during this time period, and it's, we call it rebalancing. And Josh, would you talk a little bit about what is rebalancing and how this comes into play for our clients at this time period? Yeah, so, you know, as, as our clients, uh, we help you with selecting what we call a target model. And so that target model is based on the amount of risk that you can take as an investor. So that might be, say, 80% stock, 20% bonds, or it might be 60% stock, 40% bonds, that kind of thing. And within that model, we stick to that same ratio of stocks to bonds. So if stocks go down and bonds, say, stay at the same rates or possibly go up, uh, which is what's happening right now, um, then that might cause us to trim around your investments a little bit. We call that process rebalancing. So that might involve us purchasing a little bit more stock because instead of saying owning 80% in stock, now it's 75% stock of your overall portfolio. And um, so we end up purchasing some more stock while stocks are low. And that systematic process helps us purchase while things are on sale. Uh, to Catherine's point earlier, um, this is perversely good for savers because when you have a long time that you don't need these assets for a while, now all new purchases are going in at better prices. You're getting the same shares for a less cost. And, and that's really the key for all this. But rebalancing can have a tremendous impact over time. Um, a lot of the studies show that rebalancing, doing it on a consistent basis might add you know, something like 0.2 to 0.4% to your overall returns over long periods of time, which is, which is tremendous. And for our clients, you don't have to worry about this. We do this automatically when your portfolios get more than a certain percentage out of true or what your original risk tolerance was. Now, I wanted to talk next about some things that you can do right now to take advantage of this market. So I would say one of the things you could do is your backdoor Roth IRA. If uh, you're one of our clients and we do backdoor Roths every year, don't wait till the end of the year. Now is the time to do it. The market's on sale. Things are low. So reach out to us and let us know if you'd like to do that. We'll draft from your accounts right away. Josh, what's another thing that clients could do? You know, we already talked about accelerating 401k or 403b contributions. So simply if you were saving 9%, just go into your account, switch it to 15% or something like that. So you're buying more. Uh, which obviously lowers your paycheck, but you're buying more into your 401k during this period where markets are especially choppy. Um, so that's something you could do. Another thing you can do is Roth conversions. So a reminder what a Roth conversion is, we're taking money from the pre-tax bucket. So that money's never paid tax and we're converting it to the tax-free bucket. 
The downside, of course, is you pay the taxes in the year that you convert. The upside is now when it's in the tax-free bucket, it's going to grow tax-free, come out tax-free. Now, you pay the tax based on the particular value of when you convert. So if markets are lower and we had an IRA, which is a pre-tax account, that was $100,000 and now it, it's dropped to be, say, $85,000. Well, if you convert a portion of that, you're converting more shares at, at a lesser price. So your tax bill is going to be lower when you're converting. So Roth conversions are an excellent, excellent strategy uh, to be doing while accounts are, are in a lower position, for sure. And great time to think about this because your taxes are not going to be due until April of next year, 2021. So even if you did the conversions now, you would not be looking at that tax bill for over a year. So it's a great time that you could actually plan for it. Another strategy is simply if you have some excess cash, I have a lot of uh, clients reaching out that simply have some idle cash. Um, maybe their emergency fund's a little bit too large or the money's just been sitting around. When you're going from cash to market, this is an excellent time to do that because those market prices are going to be lower. You're going to be buying more shares as a result of that. Um, so that's a great strategy. Also funding your HSA, you could accelerate the funding of an HSA if you happen to have one of those accounts uh, say through work for your health insurance. And then lastly, and this is a huge one for a lot of folks right now, is refinancing your mortgage. So um, with some of the changes here, we've seen interest rates go down. And as a result, a lot of these mortgage rates are at a level where even if you refinanced a few months ago, a year ago, it very well makes sense to refinance again. Uh, so we're seeing historical lows for these, these 30 year fixed uh, rates. Um, one common strategy is you could look at refinancing, take the excess dollars that you save, say it's two or $300 a month, and simply then invest those two or $300 on a monthly basis. It's a great way uh, to benefit you and buy those shares while they're at a lower price today, while at the same time saving a lot of money over the long haul. And not feeling the pain, which we like. And the, the one thing I would caution on, on the mortgages is, is it might be tempting to switch to, say, 20 or 15-year terms. And, and we, we suggest reserving to do that um, for a later point in life. Um, you know, if, if you're one of our clients that's nearing retirement, those kind of strategies we can look at with you. Um, but if, if you're younger and you're within the first 10 years of your career, say, uh, you want to stick to that 30-year mortgage. Otherwise, your payments are going to get way too big for a cost of debt that's very, very tiny. I will say I got a text message from a client yesterday, and she had just refinanced at 2.9%. So it's pretty astonishingly low right now. All righty. So in, in summary, Josh, what would you say? Two or three takeaways from our conversation today. I, I think the biggest takeaway is that it, markets do this and you know it, it will end up hurting your returns by getting in and out of the market because they can respond so quickly the other way. Um, for example, if there's announcements of stimulus or there's announcements of vaccines or any developments, markets might shoot up the other way just as fast as they went down. You don't want to miss out on that. And that's why it's, it's just as big a risk to get out of the market as it is to simply ride it down, ride it back up. Um, the other big point from all this is there's actions that you can take today that are going to benefit you financially. These are simply paper losses unless you actually sell when markets are low. So as long as you're not selling, this is not impacting you as, as a saver. So look to take those actions like funding the Roth IRA or refinancing your mortgage or, or doing that Roth conversion. These are all things that will help you in a tremendous way. Absolutely. And finally, I want to say to clients, reach out to us. If you've got concerns, that's why we're here. We want to talk to you. And even though if we have a packed day, no problem. Josh and I can find times to give you a quick phone call or schedule something in the near future. So I just, we just don't want you to be worried. If you've got any concerns at all, we'd be more than happy to talk to you. Yeah. And along those lines, we can also give status reports of the performance of your accounts too. Um, so if you're curious what your account levels are at, um, we can certainly send that. It takes us a few days to do that, but you can certainly reach out and we're happy to provide that. Excellent.